Today, antimicrobial resistance is a big problem. As we develop more and more antibiotics to treat bacteria, they are starting to grow more and more resistant to the drugs that we use against them. This is also called antibiotic resistance. New findings suggest that resistance to antibiotics actually emerged in bacteria in hedgehogs over 100 years ago. This was much before antimicrobial resistance started to emerge in strains that infect humans. And in fact, it is also even before antibiotics themselves started to be widely used. In this video, we'll take a look at how roadkill in Denmark other parts of Europe and New Zealand led to scientists making the discovery that microbial resistance to antibiotics that we use is actually older than antibiotics themselves that we use in humans. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The human body is home to hundreds of species of bacteria which colonize the physical systems in our bodies. These bacteria live harmlessly in animals and can live on our skin or in our noses or in our mouths without causing any harm. But if a person becomes injured and has a wound, the bacteria can enter our bloodstream through the wound or it can do so in hospital settings through intravenous tubes. Once it's in the bloodstream, it can wreak havoc in people who have a weakened or compromised immune system. One of the most common resistant strains of bacteria is called the Staphylococcus aureus, one that is resistant to an antibiotic called methicillin. This methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA is what scientists in Denmark found in the bodies of hedgehogs that were roadkills in the country. When they examined the carcasses of these animals, they found MRSC even though these specific bacteria had never come in contact with humans or antibiotics like methicillin or penicillin. The first antibiotic to be ever discovered was penicillin and it was by Alexander Fleming in 1928. He used penicillin against many different strains of bacteria starting precisely with this one the staph bacteria or the staphylococcus aureus. Now these resistant MRSA bacteria that live in hedgehogs then have been known to enter rural farms, dairy farms and then enter dairy cows from where they pass on into the human population in Denmark. Each year it is thought that about 30 people get infected with these staph bacteria in Denmark. The researchers also sampled and studied hedgehogs across Europe and New Zealand as well to obtain more data and they found the resistant bacteria across geographies. The authors of the study, which is out in nature and will be linked in the description below, sequenced the genome of the staph bacteria. With its genetic data, they were able to go back in time and trace the course of its natural evolution from the early 19th century, nearly 100 years before Fleming chanced upon penicillin. And this period also predates any selection pressure that forced the bacteria to evolve resistance to antimicrobial drugs that we use against them. And here's the interesting part. There was an additional finding that the researchers made. They discovered another pathogen on the hedgehogs that were examined in Denmark. This was a fungus, a type that infected the skin called a dermatophyte. The species is Trichophyton erinaceae. Turns out that this fungus produces two penicillin-like antibiotic secretions belonging to the beta-lactam family that inhibit the staph bacteria and prevent it from growing. Much like how antimicrobial drugs work, this substance also keeps fighting with the bacteria to keep it at bay and prevent it from multiplying so that the fungus can feed off the nutrients on the hedgehog skin. So, researchers discovered through their genetic and roadkill data that the bacteria naturally started to develop resistance to fight off this fungus and the substance it produces. The prevalent and widespread theory today that is widely accepted is that overuse of antibiotics through indiscriminate prescription and their use is what is leading to antimicrobial resistance in bacteria. 
we know that this is true as we can tell that bacteria do eventually go on to become resistant to precisely the same drugs that we use against them. But it is clearly not the only reason why bacteria go on to become resistant to antibiotics. These findings have two major implications. One is that there are other pathways to antimicrobial resistance. There are natural causes that can also lead to this kind of resistance in bacteria, which then helps them fight off our drugs. This means that there are more avenues through which bacteria can become equipped to fight these drugs. And this makes it even more challenging to deal with infections because the process has just gotten more complicated. The other implication backed by data is that antibiotic resistance doesn't necessarily stick to bacteria within one species alone because bacteria themselves can of course spread so easily between species and because now it appears there are many ways through which the microbes can develop resistance and spread antibiotic resistance isn't restricted to human bacteria alone these resistant strains can spread to other animals and then retain their resistive properties conversely bacteria that are resistant to certain antibiotics can then enter the human population from other animals as a result Humans have to be very careful in dealing with wild animals and animal carcasses, especially roadkills and cute ones like hedgehogs that we are more prone to approaching out of curiosity, especially when they're dead. MRSA itself has been identified in dairy cows, other livestock and also white storks which migrate over long distances and are thought to carry the bacteria across a wide range of geographies. But the fact that antimicrobial resistance evolved in nature without antibiotics makes medicine as a field even more challenging. However, it's important to remember that it still doesn't reduce any of the precautions that public health experts say that we should start implementing to prevent further antibiotic resistance. In the words of the lead author of this paper, this means that the findings offer us even more reason to stop overusing antibiotics because when we do, we are accelerating processes that are already developing naturally and much to our own detriment.